Frank LaBeouf is with us. It's the first time, in fact, Frank has joined us since PSG were knocked out of the Champions League once again. This time, of course, by Manchester United. It is a familiar feel when you take a look at the Liga and side and their record in Europe. It is not impressive. Uh, Frank, let's talk about the fact that it just seemed, once again, PSG on the biggest stage bottled it, bottled it, choked, however you want to put it. Once again, couldn't get across the line. You know, nobody could have uh, guessed was what just happened, you know, uh, during the game where um, you see in the first leg somebody or a team so uh, much better than Manchester United, um, giving the best and working hard together to get the 2-0 two, two away from home. So you say, OK, nothing can happen. You know, after the, what they call the Romantada uh, in Barcelona uh, two or three years ago, no, there is, nothing can happen. Manchester United is not good. Paris Saint-Germain is so superior. Uh, they're going to they're gonna, um, reach the, the quarterfinal. And then the first minute, one mistake. Or oh, they, 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 uh, they equalize. But mm. after another, another mistake from Buffon, and suddenly you don't see the, the players you saw like uh, two weeks ago, uh, two weeks before. And uh, it's not Paris Saint-Germain. It's... Uh, Players with no mental, no um, stamina, nothing, losing their, 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 their football, uh, not knowing what to do, not scoring goals, and uh, being so scared of losing uh, and, and uh, getting the, the, the third goal uh, against them that they, they got it and they deserve to lose. And Manchester United, I can't believe they are going through. What a disgrace, what a catastrophe for Paris Saint-Germain um, and what they can do now, except changing maybe half of the, the squad. Who do you blame, Frank? Personally, who do you feel is at fault for this? I think you have to blame everybody. First, the players, they're on the field, they have to do the job and they have enough experiences to to sort out the problem, especially against, um, and I'm sorry for Man United fans, but a, a team which uh, is so far lower than the Manchester United uh, level in the history of soccer. And, uh, and after that, uh, the coach, maybe, maybe halftime he has to put Kerr out, uh, make some changes tactically. And uh, of course, the, the staff, under staff, the, the president, because you... Just for like 15 days after winning 2-0 the first leg, we only heard, yeah, we have to be careful because it's not done yet, you know. And, and, and the fear came up above the players, like a big cloud ready to, to, uh, to serve everybody, you know. And, and, and it happened because, historically talking, Paris Saint-Germain is a new club. They don't know how to set up, uh, to set up uh, uh, the, the trust that you need to, to finish the game. And so everybody has to be blamed because they didn't do it properly and they didn't prepare the players properly. You mentioned Tuchel there as certainly being part of the problem. For you, is he the right man to take PSG forward in a direction where it, of course, sees them being successful in the Champions League in the future? Well, yes. I think uh, he, uh, he did well. He showed uh, some power in the, in the dressing room for the first time that we saw a, uh, a coach with... Um, with the, the, the main power, um, with no player going straight to the chairman to, uh, to sort out the problems. Um, so he showed that he had the, the temper to, to uh, deal with uh, stars uh, or so-called stars. Um, and I think we have to give him another chance to, uh, to achieve something with, with Paris because he seems to also tactically um, um, having like good ideas of how to work out with, uh, with the players and, uh, and make sure they get, they get better. Um, I really think that you have to change some players or, or sell some players to start a new cycle. And that's going to be his duty. Which one has, can stay and which others has to, have, to, have to go? It's weird for PSG because obviously they're so dominant in Ligue 1, yet their season is ultimately a failure, isn't it? And whose door does that fall at? Is it the players? Is it too cool? Is it part of everyone? Uh, it's both, 100%. Um, 
The players, no question, bottled it. Uh, Frank explained it very well. They obviously couldn't handle it. But ultimately, it's up to the, the coach, the manager, whatever you want to call them, to put his players on the field in the frame of mind where mm. they're going to go and succeed. And then when you get to half time and it looks as though it's going to fall apart, then you have to make a move. You have to do something to change that. And he didn't do it. So I don't, I don't see how you can let somebody who was instrumental in messing it up in Tuchel, I don't see how you can keep him there and, and let him try again. The trouble is for PSG is that because they have been so dominant uh, in France and in the main, uh, that when they do go out this competition, it just feels that everything's done and dusted yep. for the year. Because, and, and maybe in a way, Juventus are getting a little bit like that because they keep winning the Scudetto. But, it, and it has, and look, of course, they've spent all this money as well. It's the holy grail. We have to get the Champions League. And, and it, just, it just seems to be taking over the whole, the whole place at the moment. And, yep. and, you know, I think Tuchel, I mean, he'll get another year. But here's the, you know, the problem is they had the injuries with Neymar, they had the, the nonsense with Rabiot when they needed central midfielders and that was a, that was a mess and he wasn't available. Uh, but then as Frank said, you still only had to get past a Man United side that by their standards is not a good team of recent years or of the Fergie era. And they had, I don't know, what was it, eight or nine players out injured? I mean, it's, it's, it was inexcusable, really. It, when, it, it's going to be difficult, isn't it, for PSG to shake off this stigma? Yes, it, it is. Because after the Barcelona, you think, right, OK, one off, and then to do this against United mm. as well. Well, on, on the one hand, I want to say, yes, it would be difficult. On, on the other, I want to say, you just have to go out and, and put, a, put together a performance or two legs of a, of a, of a performance against premier European opposition to, to suggest that you can. But given what we show against Barcelona, and that's what I think makes the, the Manchester United result all the harder to accept as, as a PSG fan. That you go to Old Trafford, dominate as you do, mm. and you come back home with... Listen, you just have to finish off Manchester United, who you just convincingly beat 2-0. Beat Yet somehow they get... They make the most of, a, of an early mistake, and you as a team look like a, a day caught in headlights. And that, for me, is down to the players. Once this team freezes as they do... I'm not sure what Tommy Tuchel could do from the sidelines to get them out of that. Uh, we, of course, asked everyone for their bracket. Meanwhile, looking ahead to the rest of the Champions League without PSG. And I think I'm right in saying that Frank is the only one, if we take a look at Frank's bracket, that hasn't got City, Juventus, Barca, Liverpool as the semi-finals because he has got Ajax beating Juventus. Explain this to us, Frank. Why do you hate Juventus? No, I don't hate Juventus. I, I think they, they had a wonderful game, a second leg against uh, Atletico Madrid. But they've been hammered by, the, by Atletico in the first leg. And uh, I don't know, I simply love Ajax, the way they play, uh, the fact that they are sure of their, of their football, uh, the fact that they, they're so young that they are a little bit crazy and they, and, they, and they really think that they can go far. And I want to give them the chance, like... Uh, like the, the, the former team, you know, with Kluivert and Seedorf and, uh, and others, or Icard, um, who won the uh, Champions League in the 90s, they were, they were so young, but so uh, fresh, let's say, uh, that they, they went to the, to, to the title. And uh, I think that generation, with all the players who are going to leave next year and, uh, and blow up all that squad because mm. they are so talented that they're going to go to all other clubs, I think they can achieve they can achieve something together, and I want to see that. Uh, it's going to be hard till the end, but they can beat Juventus. You haven't got them going all the way. You've given Barcelona the, the, the title in the final. Why Barca over Manchester City, for example? Well, I think, uh, um, you know, following the history of, uh, of uh, soccer, when you see um, Marseille losing the, the f their first final in the Champions League in 91 and then winning in 93, seeing Chelsea doing the same, losing their first final and then winning the, the second one, um, I, I really think that you need to experience kind of a failure before you, uh, you go to the, to, to the, to the best. And, uh, and, and Barcelona, I don't know, Messi is quite upset with uh, everything's going around Ronaldo, and I think uh, is enough of seeing Ronaldo winning the the Champions League every year, and he, he thinks it's his turn. And uh, 
you could see uh, Juventus and Ronaldo won 3-0 the day after Messi gets two goals and give two assists. And I think it's easier and uh, my, uh, I think it can be the, the last year of Messi at the top, top, top level winning the Champions League with his, uh, with his team. So I want to give to the little man the, the, <laughs> the, little, the last title and then we'll see with others. But uh, of course City with uh, Guardiola can go there. But I think you need more. They never experienced the, the, a final of a Champions League before winning it. So I think uh, I think they're still under the process of learning.